Hi, I'm Tara, author of the cookbook Seven Spoons, and welcome to Oven Atelier. In this series, we will highlight some classic French desserts and along the way share some tips and tricks to ensure success in your own kitchen. Today, we're focusing on delicate macarons. Macarons have been in the spotlight for the last few years. We're not talking about coconut macaroons. These have a single O and are sandwich cookies made with almond meal. They are delicate and a bit temperamental. But once you break down the steps, they're really easy to make at home. To make the macaron shells, we're making an almond meringue cookie. So this is a combination of ground almonds and icing sugar that have been processed in the food processor. You really want things to be fine, so what we're going to do is pass it through a fine mesh sieve three times. This is the end of my third go. As you can see, there's very little left in the sieve. We don't want those solids in the bottom or you'll get a grainy, sandy cookie. Once that's done, we can move on to the meringue. Egg whites are an important part, an integral part of the success of your meringue. One of the tricks that you can do is actually to age them. So these egg whites have been aged at room temperature for 24 hours. And for the silkiest, shiniest meringues, pass them through a sieve before you start whipping them up. Now that they're ready, they'll just go into a stand mixer with the wire whip attached. We're going to beat the eggs with sugar. Once the meringues hold a strong peak, it's a good time to add any flavorings or food coloring. We're going for a pale pink, so just a drop of red dye is all we need. Then just mix again for about 30 seconds until it's well incorporated. Now that we have our pale pink color set, back to the dry ingredients. Lift off the whip. You'll see at this stage that the meringue is actually quite stable. It feels thick and it feels almost heavy, even though it has about tripled in volume. At this point, the dry ingredients, that's our almond meal sifted together with icing sugar, get introduced to the meringue all at once. By sifting those ingredients, not only is it that you're making sure that there's not any lumps, it's also lightened them. So now that it's time to fold, we should be able to do quickly and efficiently. Folding, same as any other time. Cut right down through the middle, turn the bowl, and flip. The almonds themselves are quite dry, even though they do have fat in them. So what you're looking for here, and it may take some time to get there, is for the batter to actually start flowing. It should be kind of lazily oozing, like molten lava. That may take as much as 30, 40 turns. But just keep at it, working slowly, carefully, getting right to the bottom of the bowl. We don't want any unmixed meringue. Once the batter looks voluptuous and smooth and flows heavily off the spatula, it's ready to go in the piping bag. Piping the macaron shells evenly is one of the keys to consistent results. There's a couple different things you can do to make the job a little bit easier. First of all, use a little bit of the batter and use it to anchor the bottom of your parchment paper. Just dab a bit on the backside and tack it down. From there, with your round tip, Holding the tip about a half inch above the surface of the pan, just pipe away. Start your circles smaller and then build it up. Better to have them small and coax them to their edges than it is to have too much. One of the defining characteristics of a macaron is what's called its foot. That's the little frill that's at the edge of the cookie. To achieve this, let the shells, now that they're all piped, rest at room temperature for about 30 minutes. That will form a skin on the top, so when the cookies bake, that will rise and remain, leaving you with that lovely crenellation across the edge. They'll bake in the oven for about 10 minutes. A vanilla buttercream like we're using today makes a fantastic filling for the macaron. But really, you could use ganache, salted caramel, a thick jam. But you're looking for something that's sweet and dense, but not something that's going to overpower the macaron. It's its delicacy that we really want to preserve. because really, that's its charm. Be sure to head to bemakeful.com for more recipes like this one, and follow at bemakeful to see what we're up to. If you happen to make one of these recipes, please use the hashtag of an atelier so we can see what you've made.